Good morning friends welcome to the point in today's video we will discuss about what de developmental financial institutions are and uh, what kind of developmental financial institutions are there in India so friends uh, before starting the video I would like to tell and reiterate the fact that uh, financial institutions are very important for an economy to develop because they act as intermediaries between the people who have excess cash and the entities who are in the need of uh, cash that is the biz big business houses and the corporates so they play a very important role in an economy's development now coming on to the developmental financial institutions as the name suggests these are financial institutions who take care of the developmental part or the aspect of the economy and how we'll see that the development financial institutions or dfi are the organizations which are either owned by the government or by charitable institutions to finance the infrastructure projects that are of national importance but may or may not meet uh, the commercial return standards so friends uh, it is not necessary that these developmental financial institutions are uh, only owned by the government but they can be owned by some charitable institution who are concerned with the growth of the economy or the development of the economy as a whole and these institutions are formed with an objective to finance such infrastructure projects that are of national importance uh, but at the same time that the projects may not uh, need the commercial return standards so what is this commercial return standards for an example if i open up a factory i would definitely uh, need a return over it so that is what is called running a factory or an enterprise with a commercial point of view or with a view to earn profits but these projects are undertaken because they are of national importance they are for the development of the economy as a whole and for uh, the benefit of the society and uh, not just with the objective to earn returns over it it differentiates itself by a thoughtful balance between commercial norms of operation as adopted by any financial institution like commercial banks and developmental responsibility it emphasizes the long term financing of project rather than collateral based financing now the financing done by these projects is not the collateral based financing so what is this collateral based financing whenever a whenever a commercial bank extends loan to people like you and me or any business house they definitely keep some collateral or security when the loan is extended and the objective behind is the security of the money that is given in case if the debtor defaults in the payment of uh, the principal or the interest or goes bankrupt the bank can always sell uh, the security assets which are kept with them and recover their money but in case of dfis uh, there is no collateral based financing and the money is extended as a part of long term financing rather than taking some amount as a or some assets uh, keeping it as a security move on to the next slides which talks about the objectives of dfi the so the primary objective of dfi is the economic development and how do they do the economic development by providing basic infrastructure facilities not that they directly provide the infrastructure facilities they finance such projects which are uh, beneficial for the development of an economy so that is the primary objective of dfi next is these banks provide financial as well as the technical support so not they on, not only that they provide financial supports uh, they also provide technical support uh, in the way in the form of um, advanced technology or consulting services to various sectors they do not accept deposits from the people like the commercial bank does the only uh, objective is to provide the finance and they do not indulge in accepting deposits from the local public they raise funds by borrowing funds from funds from the government and by selling their bonds to the general public so there are they have two ways of raising the funds either they get the finance from the government and the second way is they sell their uh, bonds in the market to the general public now by selling the bonds for an example uh, to develop a highway they could uh, float some bonds that is uh, related to national highway development to which people subscribe and then they get a return over it in the form of interest next is it pro also provides a guarantee to banks on behalf of companies and subscription to shares debentures etc so for an example if there is a company which is of national importance or uh, is very economically viable for any economy to sustain so if that company wants a huge amount of loan from banks so they also act as a guarantor to those uh, for those companies uh, to the banks who is extending loan next is they also provide technical assistance like project report viability study and uh, consultancy services environmental imp uh, impact assessments all of this also is also provided by the dfis
so uh, the next is classification so how do we classify the dfis so the first one is sector specific in which the investment or the amount is given uh, as per the particular sector or the development of a particular sector and the next is the investment institutions so what are these sector specific as i told they focus on a particular development of a particular sector for example or uh, development of export sector or development of firm sector so the dfi would focus on uh, the development of former sector so they will provide loans only in that sector or to the companies hailing from that sector next is investment institutions they focus on facilitating business operations such as capital expenditure financing and equity offerings so what they do is they are uh, basically concerned with the equity markets or the financial markets of the country and they play a vital role uh, over there moving on to the last slide for the day that is the important dev development financial institution in india so what you need to focus over here is the first one is uh, the first financial institution in india is ifci that is industrial finance corporation of india which was established in 1948 and uh, it is india's first development financial institution now this is something you need to remember and it could be asked in various exams in the mcq form the next is ici and the striking feature of ici is that uh, it was uh, the first dfi in private sector so if somebody ask you which is the first uh, dfi in india that is ifci but the first dfi in private sector is icici which you commonly known as ici bank then comes is idbi and was set up in 1964 under rbi and was granted autonomy in 1976 it is responsible for ensuring adequate flow of credit to various sectors and then is IRCI the focus or the objective what with which it is first formed was to revive the sick industrial units and uh, to provide them the funding so that they can be revived and they do not go bankrupt because when a company goes bankrupt it is closed lot of people lose their uh, employment and there is lot of loss that is caused to society in the form of resources as well so this was formed with the sole objective to revive those weak units the last one is sidbi and there are more other dfis but i have covered just the major ones so the last one which we are going to discuss is sidbi and was established in 1918 89 as a subsidiary of idbi and was granted autonomy in 1998 so these are the major a uh, important financial institution that you need to know that is the first one then the first private one the uh, the one with the objective of reviving the sick unit and why was and when was the idbi uh, incorporated there are other development financial institutions in india as well you can go through the list uh, it is available on the internet but not uh, i have not mentioned it here so friends uh, this was all for today's video i have covered this topic in great detail what are dfis uh, and what is the objective they do not go for the collateral financing the two types of it and the major uh, ones in india so friends stay fit stay at home and thank you so much for your patience listening